and we'll talk. Okay. Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone to another episode of The Rock Fantasy Files. And we have a special guest today and uh, coming in from, I believe, Portland, Oregon. Yep. And That's it. we've got Gabrielle Franco. Yeah, Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah, yeah Gabriel. Yeah. And uh, call me Gabe. friends call me Gabe. So we got Gabe, and uh, he's not live with us. He is on, he's on phone with us today. I do have a picture of them from the album, and this Gabe is uh, the vocals. And uh, how's everything going today? And thanks for thanks for joining us on my little uh, creation here. And uh, I'm a big fan. So. Oh well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me. Um, everything's going up. Just another kind of boring day here in Portland. We're um, just, you know, working on stuff, working on music. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of my first uh, thing of the day that I'm doing the interview here. So. Yeah, it kind of. It's, uh, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon here in the East Coast. So what are what are you on? Ten o'clock out by you? Yeah. Uh, I got a late start today. That's okay. We're in pandemic. Yeah blues here pandemic uh i call it pandemic i get pandemic alzheimer's of course i'm about 59 you're much younger than i am you're probably my youngest yeah. guest on the show but uh i i discovered you through spotify actually i was driving and i was listening to visigoth who was another band that i've been quite passionate about that i found out a year or two ago about and from salt lake city which is more of a like power metal, I guess, a new wave of British heavy metal style. And yeah. it was just, it started, I guess it was Visigoth Radio, and all of a sudden Idle Hands came on, and I heard one of your songs, and I immediately thought it was something special. And I think I actually reached out to you guys and bought some vinyl and whatnot for my shop. So I just wanted to, you know, it was, it's an honor to have you to come back on, uh, come on the show, and uh, maybe you tell us a little bit about Mana, and how, and the recording, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, no, that's actually pretty cool, honestly. Um, I guess I got, they're old friends of ours, and, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, but um, yeah, uh, great band, and, and great dudes. Um, but yeah, Mana, um, you want to know about the recording process. Yeah, I guess recording and, uh, you know, how long have you had the songs written for that? I guess we could actually start off with uh, Don't Waste Your Time, which is your EP. Yeah, I mean, I can start at yeah. the beginning if you like. Yeah, let's start in the beginning. <laughs> let's go all the way back. So what year? Yeah. Uh, what about that in 1991? Uh, uh, let's see. We... We uh we had an old band called Spellcaster and that disbanded in 2017. And um, I was feeling kind of lost after that disbanded. It was kind of a crappy split all around. Um, okay. And uh, um, for a while I was just kind of moping around, not knowing really what I wanted to do. And then I said, you know, screw this. I'm uh, gonna start my own band. I had been writing songs for years, but uh, I take them to band practice and they would get fucked up or people would just ruin them. I had full cohesive ideas and, and, um, uh, yeah, I was just getting sick of my work being stepped on. Um, okay. and I said, I was like, all right, fuck this, this, this next band I'm singing and I'm playing guitar so that I'm in control of the artistic aspect of it because I was playing bass all the years before that. Um, and kind of managing the band, but I wasn't really in command. Okay. So, yeah, so I uh, started this with Sebastian. Um, I would write the songs at home, and and um, I got my old drummer, Colin, to play drums. He he, he didn't want to be in the band, but he helped me with studio okay. studio drums. Uh, and uh, we, we cut Blade in the Will and put it out on Instagram. Uh, and like all you know, band camp and whatnot, and mm -hmm. we got it. We got an all right response, and so then we went back. And when we had a little bit more money, because we're all working just day jobs, you know, like we did uh, "By Way of Kingdom" off the EP, and that got a little bit of a good response too. And great song. Uh, all right, I used those two songs to promo the band, and then a couple months later, we put out uh, uh, 
called the Don't Waste Your Time EP. And once we put that out, that's when things kind of started snowballing for us. Um, mm. I would just get off work every single day and work on band stuff, you know, until I had to go to sleep and then repeat. I mean, my life was just straight work back then, either at my day job or when I'm at home. Okay. Um, yeah, working here. So that, that was a crazy year. 2018 was our launching board year. We, I just got everything in place, everything planned and scheduled. I was writing Mana. Uh, I was recording Mana. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, once the end of the year came, uh, we did Christmas. And in January, I put the final touches on Mana at the studio here in Portland. Yes. Um, and it was literally the day we were leaving for the first show of our tours. We uh, we had a West Coast tour with this band called Haunt. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yes, I, I'm familiar with them. I was actually supposed to see them. Uh, we'll go on about the tours a little bit. That was coming in uh, to, to New York City with uh, the band Satan. I think they were on the same tour. But we'll, yeah, we'll let you finish and we'll, we'll talk about the yeah. touring a little yeah. bit. That was going to be a big weekend in New York City that same weekend. Yeah, that happened the same time as our decibel tour, but we'll, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, basically put the finishing t- the touches on that. Went out on the pond, came home for a couple weeks, then we flew to Europe um, and opened a tour for Tribulation and Gull's Word and uh, Uada, and we were on a bus wow. on that tour. So that was kind of a magical first time experience of uh, being on the tour bus for the first time and all the bands were super cool and oh, it was yeah. a v- very memorable time uh, i mean uh tribulation is one of my favorites and also uh i i, I love you Ada. oh yeah and uh Uada actually is uh located in the portland metro area as well they they live up in battleground washington which is like a you know, twenty mile drive from Portland, but um, sounds like a yeah. pretty uh, sounds like a pretty metal town, battleground <laughs> for you, Wada, to come uh, from. Those it are... sounds like that. It sounds to be the same. It's, it's, okay, uh, <laughs> I'm sure. It's it's just it's a rural area. So okay, uh, but um, yeah, no, they got a sweet name. Uh, and so I've known Jake for a really long time from Wada. Um, uh, since I was first getting into music, actually, when wow, I was in high nice. school, like. I would go see his old band ceremonial castings at the Satyricon in Portland. Okay. You know, it's closed now in the famous venue here. But um, mm-hmm. anyways, we did that tour with them in Europe. That was our first exposure, first European tour, first, I mean, that was first of a lot, you know, we, and we actually had to pay to be on that one. Okay. Uh, we were so small at the time that we're like, well, hell yeah, we're going to take the opportunity, you know, sure. we were un- unknown. And, um, we used that as an opportunity to come back, but with a fan base. So mm-hmm. uh, that was like our pre-promotional tour. Like, hey, who the hell are these opening guys on on this tour of tribulation? And then we planned a 50-day tour a month later, where we just came back to Europe and played just clubs and released Mana at the same time, and also played Keep It True. And it was all just this very strategic. Um, pummeling of Europe, basically. It sounds like uh, you had quite the campaign in Europe. Yeah, uh, going out with Tribulation, I, I can see similarities between Tribulation with you. Not that you sound exactly like, but I could see it totally pulling together and people that liking Tribulation, liking Idle Hands, and vice versa. I, I agree. Uh, we we were uh, already huge fans of Tribulation before we went on that tour. Huge fans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of uh, a little bit nerve wracking, but once we got to know the guys, they were really, really nice. And now we're all friends. So good. Um, yeah, it's really sweet. Um, so yeah, uh, we went out on that solo tour of Europe. It was 34 shows over 50 days. And on that, that's when we started getting a ton of attention. Um, we got hit up by a man- management agency. Um, I locked down a new booking agent. This guy, Nick Storch, he does like, Ghost and Uncle Acid and um, well King Diamond and stuff like that. Oh, okay. He's actually, okay. He's actually the one who actually um, he he did, he agreed to be our booking agent, I believe, before that tour. And he's a really cool dude. I like him a lot. Cool. Um, he's a real music fan and been doing it for a long time. And I was just like, man, who is this guy? Like, because I, you know, I, I was like, we need a booking agent for the U.S., but I 
you know, like, who do I go to? And I would pipe up all these big bands, like all my favorite bands, and it's like booking agent, Nick Storrs, next to it. I'm like, well, this is obviously our guy. Cool. So, <laughs> so anyways, uh, stoked to, to work with him. And um, he was the first one to pitch us for that King Diamond tour that would happen later that year. It was amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. And so we got hit up by management. Um, as well and so we're, we're on this management label called 5b now and they do a lot of really uh other really cool artists like they do king diamond as well they do um mm -hmm. slipknot megadeth and uh, uh, some of the biggies yeah 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 i mean so uh, you know i was like whoa all right this is uh this might have some potential here um so uh yeah last year was just kind of a crazy whirlwind year we capped it off with that. Uh, we played Psycho Las Vegas. We did some more music videos and, uh, and ended the year with the King Diamond tour. When did uh, when did Mana actually get released? Was that in the spring of that about a year ago? Now it was, it was all over in Europe. Yeah, it was on May tenth. May tenth. Um, That's what I because I remember getting it in last year, and it was yeah. probably. It was in my number one album of the year for most of the year. The only one that and I, I, you're probably gonna hang up on me now, but it got bumped. <laughs> It got bumped by the new mayhem. Mayhem, yeah, mayhem yeah. did bump you, but uh, I, I think it, I, now I, I still listen to you a little bit more. I don't tell Attila and those guys. But. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to be doing that. I heard they're pretty cool, so yeah, um, but yeah. So yeah, you know, so yeah, so well, I don't want to interrupt you, but yes, I got to see you. So we're so we're moved forward into uh, the fall of 2019. And I got to see you guys live finally uh, at the King's Theater in Brooklyn. And it was you and, of course, Uncle Acid and King Diamond. And what a great, I've never been to that venue before. But wow, it looked like I was being transformed into something from like the 16th century in there. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it myself. That was probably the most beautiful theater we played on that whole tour, too. Uh, absolutely insane it, in it looked like something from a universal monsters horror set or something like a fan of the opera and it was kind of perfect for king diamond you know to be playing there because it was king's theater so it's like yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly i i think um i think uh he planned it that way actually because um uh more than half three quarters of the venues we played on that tour were like that they were like older not, theaters yeah yeah they were they were more like opera house yeah um, uh, that we played as opposed to rock clubs and rock theaters i think king wanted it that way because it, it fits better with his image i mean no, it was excellent i mean it was it was nice and i, I was down in front i actually shot a little footage with my phone of you guys that you guys actually shared on your social media. So it made me feel kind of cool. I forget. <laughs> and then I accidentally was, I was at another show the following night. I was at Nile and Terrorizer. And for some reason I erased some of the files from my phone. I could never get them back. So I had more wow. footage of you. I had a lot of footage from Uncle Acid that, I, that were, were going in Cyberland, but uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so the mana sell does the the mana do pretty well for you? Does it did it sell well? And uh, yeah, I think um, the first pressing we did of a thousand was sold out the day we released it. Uh, oh, that's good. So we immediately started a second pressing, and um, that uh, yeah, that came out I think a couple months later, and I think it's been pressed three times now because I got a third pressing. Okay. Diamond tour. Um, nice. Yeah, and I still have quite a few of those left. Good. Um, so yeah, uh, but it did, it did really well. Um, it got put on. I think it was Kerrang did a, a pretty cool list. They said the top ten gothic metal albums of all time. Kerrang! We huh? I didn't even know. There with like typo negative. With, uh, all time. Oh wow! Of all time, that's great. Yeah. They, And so I, I, that was probably the most humbling article that I, I've seen about the album. Um, what, you know, of course, what I'm hoping for is that I mean, it, it's still getting momentum to this day. 
and hopefully it can become a classic. You know, that's the dream of any artist. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's pretty classic already. I mean, I, I'm a big music fan and metal fan and whatever else, but I, I, I think it, it does, it's a lot of catchiness and there's a lot of, it sounds like you're singing from the soul. In fact, I asked you about a couple of characters from soul and you let me know it's kind of fiction. And it wasn't anything you were really singing about from relationships. Well, with it's, it's fiction inspired by real life. Good. Okay. Good. And, you know, because yeah, I, I, I like I like writing stories and storytelling. Like, nice. You, know, you, you, you definitely. Dragon, why do you cry? Nightfall and stuff. Can you hear the rain upon my window? Is a great yeah. song. I thought you know uh, the more of the, of the ballady style, and of course you know like Nightfall, up tempo. Cos the cosmic one, uh, the, uh, you know, you got the up tempo ones, and then you've got these really ballady, not ballady, but you know what I mean in that sense of matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I hear you. Uh, so, so, yeah, I think you know, and I'm I'm working on the second album right now, actually. Excellent. I I think that's kind of what I'm missing is I have I have all these big tempo songs and some upbeat fast ones, but I don't have any ballads yet. You don't have any. So, any uh, I'll have to look. There, I will say with the second album, there's some really heavy shit on there, heavier than we've done in the past. Because you know we're heavily influenced by black metal and thrash metal and stuff. Cool. Uh, that sounds uh, interesting. Yeah, I love I love those both those genres of music to death. You know, and so um, those elements come into the songs every once in a while, like mm -hmm. even on Mana. Um, on Mana, you know, the end of Don't Waste Your Time, there's a total just thrash metal section with last beats and with, uh, yes. you know, yeah, I, double kicks. I was listening to that when I got up this morning. I said, well, let me put the album on and actually look at the lyrics because I knew I was going to interview you today and uh, I was checking that out. And, I, you know, I, I've listened to it a million times without, without actually reading the lyrics. Like, Double Negative is it's like a really good song, too. And it, it's really about depression, but it's... Uh, it fits, and I listen to a ton. Of, I, I told you this off the air. I listen to a ton of Catatonia, and I think that you can you like how Jonas puts his words and his lyrics in into like expressing like depression and anxiety and all. Like you've done some of that. I felt like it's like wow, this is really about some depressing stuff. Where you know some of it is, and I think you do do it very well. Well, thank you. I I think a lot of it comes from um, well, one, I've, I've always kind of had a tip on my shoulder. I don't know why, but I think that intensified with, uh, with, uh, you know, spending like seven years in my previous band and having it go nowhere. Yeah. Feelings of crushing failure. You start to feel, um, so, yeah, you know, so that's I what, mean, just yeah. societal pressures, you know, yeah. like to succeed and you, you feel like you wasted so much fucking time of your life, but uh, the reality is, no, it was it was all learning. Um, that's really a lot behind the title, Don't Waste Your Time. Yeah, I, I was just saying, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, don't waste your time. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, because it was just so much year, so many years of, like, struggle and hardship and bullshit and being, like, so broke all the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, when it finally did fall apart and collapse, like, I'm like, what the hell was I doing? You know, what the fuck? Like, I, you know, I understand. It's almost like uh, starting a business or starting a record shop or something and putting yeah, years into it and then it just goes you know, away. And Yeah. A part of success is understanding when you failed and understanding when to, to let something go Yeah. and start over again. Um, and that's what I just put off for so long because I, I thought, no, to succeed, you need to keep pushing through and persevere. And it's like, yes. No. Uh, idle hands in the span of you know, two years has become, you know, 50 times bigger than my old band or whatever, you know, like, it, yes. <laughs> you know, it, it, we were a bullet on the radar compared to this. So, uh, you know, what we did in two years, as opposed to something like it just shows if you actually work, you want, you want something, you can make it happen. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I have the, uh, you know, benefit of working in this underground music scene for, almost 10 years now so mm -hmm. I, I i know how to get things done but um yeah it's it's just perseverance man perseverance. and of course <laughs> and of course yeah. 
and you guys were on a roll, of course, coming off the King Diamond tour, getting some exposure with I the know. new album, and then you had big plans going out. Well, yeah, we were going to, I mean, we were going to go, I guess I can say this now since it's all canceled and done, but we were going to do the decibel tour, right? And then yeah. come back home for a month, and then we were going to go to China, actually, for 10 days. Holy shit. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we were supposed to do a 10-day Chinese tour with uh, two festival dates over in China. I had no got canceled, obviously. I had no uh, idea about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the decibel, no, I, the decibel tour... I, I had tickets for, and of course, you know, yeah. I got refunded. I've still got, yeah. I should have grabbed them because I'm on video, even though, you know, and I have yeah. the decibel tour tickets hanging in my kitchen on the wall because my wife, whenever it comes in the mail, yeah. she just sticks it on the wall. Here's your tickets for Halloween. Here's yeah. your tickets for Mayhem. Here's your tickets for Iron Maiden. They're on the yeah. wall, and they're still there. And that was yeah. going to be, I think that would have been some great exposure for you, too. You had Mayhem. You had yeah. Abbott. And I believe Gate yeah. Creeper, right? Was it Gate Creeper? Uh, Gate Creeper, yeah. And you guys, yeah. Uh -huh. And that was, a, that was a big weekend in New York City because the night before was uh, Bort Nagar oh, yeah. and Rotting Christ. Mm -hmm. And that same night also in New York City on that same Friday was Tear. And it was a lot going on. And I, I think the Decibel, the Decibel Beer Fest in Philly was that weekend also, and like Hawk, we were talking about earlier, we're in New York City on Sunday with uh, Satan. Mm -hmm. So that would have been a hell of a weekend in New York City, and I I, I don't know how I was going to keep up with it because I'm, I'm I'm almost sixty. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's a total bummer that this happened. Uh, we were supposed to release uh, a beer in Philadelphia, the Decibel Beer Fest. Oh, you were. Yeah, we had a nightfall beer that we were going to put out. Oh, it's so um, cool. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, I, that tour was going to be really cool. And then, uh, it, yeah, after it got canceled, it was kind of like, all right. I mean, we were in, we were on our way. Um, and the, the cool thing is, even though it was canceled, we still got a lot of promotion from that. Because yes. it got canceled the day before it was supposed to start. So, you know. so, so you, so you actually didn't get any dates in at all on that tour. No, we, no, okay. we, we were driving for two days to start the tour. We had everything loaded up. Okay. We were in uh, Green River, Utah. Yeah. Um, well, the first day we were driving to Salt Lake City. That was day one. Yeah. And, uh, and on the way, Seattle and San Francisco got canceled. And then we're like, okay, well maybe it's just you know, because you, you yeah. know, it's like the old times. It's like, ah, oh, this isn't going to turn into anything, whatever. Yeah. And then we get to Salt Lake, go to bed. Next day, wake up, we're driving. We're in Green River, Utah, which is like southern, mid-southern Utah. Yeah. Or central Utah. And, um, and they, you know, they call us. So I got canceled. The whole tour is canceled. It's not happening because city after city is like, that's creating these holding restrictions. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was right. So I we're was... like, oh, okay, well, it's still allowed for 200 people, you know, gatherings. Like, maybe we can do a club tour. We'll just do a club tour in the U.S. We already got our van. We're ready to go. Sure. And then, uh, you know, we're like, we slowly realized, you know, just kind of like realizing, no, no, no. Nothing and, you know, everything was changing so fast. Man. Yeah. So we're like, all right, well, we're right, there, we're right near Moab. So we went to Moab, Utah that night and just partied and uh because bars were still open then and sure. you know had some beers and then the next day we're like all right well let's drive home and even on the drive home you know it's just pummeling with information the news was coming in every hour wow. like more and more bullshit and it, it was, was just really, like, it was, that, that was i, I yeah. remember i remember that well because of course the last day that i worked my store was like March 11th, March 12th. I don't know, March, yeah. somewhere around that. And I got home kind of knowing something dark and evil was ascending in the country. At least that's how my soul felt about it. Because I yeah. got tipped off by a friend that, uh, that sold me stuff that's actually from out in Oregon now. He sells me some stuff for the smoke shop part of the store. I, so he, he gave me a tip about three weeks before. I, I know someone that works 
for like NASA or whatever it's called now in the States and uh, he's part of the government and we're all gonna be on lockdown for like six weeks. So immediately I started, I'm one of those toilet paper hoarders. I wasn't, no, I wasn't really, but uh, my wife's got a lot of health issues and I'm a caregiver to her. Yeah. So I started like shooting to the store and I bought like an extra freezer and got, you know, for a while you just didn't know. I mean, we still don't really know what's going on. I yeah. don't know. No, yeah. And you know, what's funny is when that, that all started happening too. That was Friday the 13th as well. It was. was kind of ominous timing. Um, but uh, yeah. It, anyways, the the tour got canceled. Obviously, yeah. we went home. And since I've just been like everybody else, just stuck at home. But I've I've been writing a ton. We're what we're, we're well into you know getting our second album done. There's actually a lot of. Unfortunately, there's a lot of updates, huge updates with the band that I can't say anything about yet. Okay. But, um, at least recorded, but um, basically, it's just like, you know, like this is going to be an interesting year for Islands for for good and bad, but mostly good. Okay. Um. So and, and new music's definitely on the way, and I would expect it out in early 2021, and we're hoping to coincide that with um a bunch of touring next year but well, let's you know let's keep point. our fingers crossed that by next year that we can get back to seeing bands and having beers and bars and i mean uh, up yeah. in up in new york they just opened bars again like yesterday you can go into a bar now and have a beer because one of my employees is a bartender so she's working for me we've been open for about two weeks as a record shop because we were totally shut down and yeah. that's why I started doing the program, this program a little, just to keep my mind working because it was really easy. As you were talking about, don't waste your time. I felt like all these years I've been in business 34 years with the record shop. And is this the end? And yeah. watching the media every day. And I was like really in a depression over the whole thing. And then, of course, the horrible incident went on out in Minneapolis and we had all the unrest. and. Yeah, it was just yeah. like you know me running a little record shop. It didn't seem like a real small equation to the problem of anything. But I, I'm really trying to keep going with it, and let's hope you know things get better. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's that's all you can do is wait, um, yeah. and hope. Hopefully, they can get a vaccine going. Whoever they are. Um. <laughs> yeah, some kind of vaccine for the. Thing and you know and all that yeah <laughs> we, you can't take anything for granted anymore you know you can't just you know just go into the convenience store and getting some ice cream and some beer or something or a gallon of milk you can't you know you can't even take that for granted now you gotta go i got an n95 mask so i've been going out a little bit because i feel my store is open and i gotta be there some but my employee my employees are pretty much running it i go up in the morning but uh i guess uh, I would like to ask you uh, what got you into hard rock and heavy metal? Uh, what were some of your influences? How were you exposed to the genre and what made you decide like, wow, this is what I want to do and this and that? Uh, I've always had the passion to heavy music. Um, even when I was a kid, I remember my first memories of music is being like 10 or so. And um, my, my parents, didn't listen to heavy music at all. My dad listened to bands like Earth, Wind, and Fire and Tina Turner. And my mom listened to Fleetwood Mac and stuff, which all those bands I actually love. Like, like classic rock and uh, it sounds like some yeah, R&B yeah, and, yeah. and stuff. But I, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really even think of those bands as, you know, even really rock and roll when I was a kid. I was like. I was just like, oh, this is just parent music, right? And um, dad rock or something. No, yeah, they're going out there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, so you know, I I remember I would record. Um, I do. I had a little dual tape cassette thing. So like, when the radio would put on a song I liked, I'd press record and put it on my tape. So I'd make little mixtapes of of uh, uh, of songs I liked on the radio, which was like System of a Down and. Uh, alien ant farm and <laughs> yeah, 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 some pretty bad stuff. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I was like, oh, okay, this is sweet. And my buddy Nick, he 
he showed me uh, Blink-182, and his, but his house, his dad would always put on, like, Sum 41, Blink-182, and, like, mm-hmm. Black Sabbath, right? Like, all the time. And he just, like, yelled them at us, like, to sing these songs to us, mm-hmm. which was fun. We all had fun just jumping around the couches and stuff and just rocking out. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, what got it finally really started was I, I kind of really didn't, focus on music ever until like yeah you know, seriously until i was like 15 and i was at my friend's house and limewire had just came out and um i was like you know he's like hey you got to check this song out and it was cradle Filth doing a cover of iron maiden's how would be thy name okay yeah and uh i was like and i had never listened to iron maiden either at that point okay so, I just, I thought it was their song, and, you know, they, they say, like, motherfucker in the beginning, and it's all tough, it's, it's, you know, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this, this is, this is fucking sweet, it was, like, the coolest thing I had ever heard, yeah. and so I, I just, like, was immediately drawn to that, it was, my favorite band was now Cradle of Filth, so that was your, every that was... single song I possibly could, and then uh, I moved, I, I moved on, my four bands in high school were Cradle of Filth, Jimmy Borger, At the Gates, and Arch Enemy. And okay. uh, I listened I listened to those bands religiously. Um, which is funny now because um, Michael Amat, the guitarist from Arch Enemy, him and I have talked a few times and he got I, I sent him a merch package and he's he's posted about how our album's good and has written a few nice. articles for his Japanese. He has a Japanese article section in, in Burn magazine. He mentioned Mana and there and I'm like, Oh my god. Cool. <laughs> so that was kind of crazy, but yeah, um, and some arch enemy and stuff and all that. I, I listened to, to those bands and I was like, yeah, fucking death metal, heavy metal, as heavy as I can get. And uh, yeah, I met these guys who would later be my bandmates, and they're like, oh, listen to Judas Priest, and I was like, checking it out, and I'm like, this is cool, but I was like, but this isn't metal. <laughs> oh no! Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck you. We're gonna kick your ass. And I'm like, yeah, obviously now I'm like, yes, Judas Priest is the epitome of metal. But then I was uneducated. You were so, just like into the real heavier black metal star, and you're like, ah, yeah, screw that old. Yeah, uh, I thought that was metal. You know, yeah. Anything else would be rock, you know. Uh, but now, I, I, you know, obviously I understand it a bit more. But um, uh, so they got me into Metallica, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden. Oh, my classics. Born, you know, and all that old school stuff and they kind of fused so i like to say i started i started heavy and i slowly moved to lighter and lighter music up until even this day you oh, know really? like, and i'm a fan of everything from top to bottom i i like black me- I'm not a huge death metal fan but i like black metal all the way down to and yeah you know what i mean okay like, like i if it's good songwriting and it's authentic i, I dig it You're so well-rounded so uh... Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. And yeah. you can hear some of the influences, I think, on your album. It's, it, it, you can tell that you, you're listening to other stuff, I think. But, but I don't know. It's just but No, yeah, the, many... that's the whole point of art for me. Like, if I, I, I'm trying to do something, do whatever I want. Yeah. So if I have an idea that I think sounds cool, I just do it. I don't think, well, what are people going to think? I go, what the well, fuck those people? This is my music. Like, You're sold like, out, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not writing it for you. Like, I'm writing it for me. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how, you know, once I start writing it for you, then I've sold out. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I just kind of do whatever I want. I put some lasers, or I want an Amazon Dragon Ball Deep Cry, or I want to do any of that shit. I just do it, you know, and um, hopefully... Song people can understand where I'm coming from because it's gen- it's generally I'm, I'm trying to be as authentic as I can with everything. Good, good. Yeah. Well, I thank you for uh, giving me some of your time today out there yeah. in the West Coast. I'm here in Middletown. Where are you? In, you're in Portland, you said, right? Yeah, Southeast Portland. Southeast, yeah. And uh, I don't know, anything else you want to add today? or? Um. Yeah, uh, let's see. I guess yeah, just just look out for some some new music in the coming weeks. Um, yeah, there's gonna be some. I'm gonna put something out. So, I 
Okay, yeah, we're we're uh, looking forward to that. And uh, now, if someone hasn't never heard your band before and would like to check you out, of course, you can find Idle Hands on Spotify. You can find Idle Hands on YouTube. And uh, how how would they go to buy some merchandise or records? Uh, can we steer them in the correct uh, right direction today? Yeah, just Google Idle Hands or Idle Hands. Uh, uh, web store on Google, it'll come up. Um, cool. Our official merchandise shop is LoneFurRecords.com, like a fir tree. Okay. Uh, Lone Fur, and uh, uh, that's the name of a cemetery here in town that I kind of jacked the name. Oh, from. cool. Lone Fur Cemetery. So, um, yeah, uh, Idlehand.us. Uh, we're on Facebook, and there's links to all our stuff. Facebook, Instagram. That's how I contacted you and bought some records for the record shop. Was through the Facebook, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, if people have questions or need to get in contact for any reason, they can email me or direct message on either of those. Now, did, mean, it, it did, buzzes my phone immediately. Yeah, I'll see it. I'll reply if, if it's a real question. <laughs> if it's a real question. Now, uh, did you get? like the financial burdens of the decibel tour did you have all of your t tour, tour merchandise printed i know that i know that some people that went out in that same weekend i was uh two bands that i'm one band that i'm friendly with is omnium gatherum and uh they flew in similar to what you guys were getting ready to start the tour they flew in from finland with insomnium and pretty much hey see you tomorrow and they didn't really realize what the hell they were getting into and yeah they ended up with stuff with a lot of tour merch and stuff and uh are you selling some of that through the web or, or? yeah so we actually lucked out because i didn't get more much printed for that tour aside from a small box of t-shirts okay patches, um because we still had a ton of leftover merch from the king diamond tour oh good because on the king diamond tour um, we had the price match with him, so uh, our shirts were like forty bucks, and a lot of people, you know, um, yeah, you know, want to buy a forty dollars shirt from the open band. Our hoodies were like sixty five dollars. I remember. So yeah, so we kind of got screwed, and there was nothing we could do about it. It wasn't by King himself; it was just that's when you get to that level, those high end merch companies run the show. Yes, and they they make rules. Um, it's not the bands who make the rules. So yeah. Um, basically, we got screwed by that, and on top of that, our merch had to be put in like some faraway corner of the venue every day. They were like, "You guys go over there where nobody's, you know, walking." Past yeah, I had to go. I had to go look for it that night because uh, you know, my I love King Diamond and Uncle Acid, but my reason for going to that tour was to check out your band. I mean, I've seen King oh, Diamond you. a million times. I saw Merciful Fate in '84, so yeah, you know, so I know not that I would not right now. I'm Jones to go to any kind of concert. My buddy plays like acoustic guitar doing dead covers at, at the store across town. I, I'm, I'm going to go set up a little table selling some stuff from my store, I think, this weekend if the weather's okay, just to hear a, li hear a live guitar being played. <laughs> I know, seriously. <laughs> but actually, I, would, I would be there too if I could. Cool, I'm man. I'm like ready to watch anyone play some music. I yeah. don't care. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, um, yeah, uh, that that our merch was hidden, and um, anyways, we so we had a lot of leftover stuff. From well, that's before. a good thing that you didn't you didn't have like you know twenty thirty grand in merch uh, ready to go out on this big tour with Mayhem, and then having to I mean, eat I, all I mean, that. I actually did. <laughs> well, uh, if you want a shirt, go go buy one from Gabe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, then everyone's been great. When that tour got canceled, we sold more merch in one day than we ever have, like in a, you know, in a day. Yeah. Um, and we got rid of a lot of stuff that Good. we couldn't um, go on tour. So everyone was really cool. Um, well, cool. well, thank you for joining us today. And uh, check out my website, www.rockfantasy.com. And uh, check out my store in Middletown, New York. And uh, like like if you like the video please hit like and subscribe to my channel and show some love to idle hands and check them out if you haven't heard them i think you'll like them i know i've been doing a lot of death metal on this channel so far because i'm friends with a lot of death metal people but this is not death metal so you know some people are like ah, it's just death metal and like no i'm not i know <laughs>
but the idle hands is uh really good and i i give them the thumbs up and i guess we're gonna wrap this one up fantastic it's been great talking to you thanks for having me yeah thank you mm -hmm. bye